Hello and welcome to another Aloha Watercolors tutorial. This month is all about tropical fruit and I'd like to start with some dragon fruits in a loose watercolor technique as you can see here. So for supplies I will be using some handmade watercolor paper by Shizen. It's really thick, it's like a cardboard. I'm gonna use a number 10 round brush and two of my handmade watercolors, Aloha watercolors. This is a lime green called Ulu, which means breadfruit in Hawaiian. And this is a brand new one, Opera Rose, which is based on a pink neon pigment. So the great thing about a thing about this is that of course it looks gorgeous on paper. However, as all as with all opera rose and neon pigments and watercolor, this paint is not very light fast. So I would recommend that you use it either maybe in your sketchbook, as I did here in your journal, you know, a place where you can basically <laughs> protect it from UV light, or you use a UV protective spray on top of your artwork or keep it out of your sun for sure. Otherwise, you'll see some changes in color over the period of time, like a few months. Sometimes it takes a year or longer, but um, after a while, the color will fade, unfortunately, a little bit. All right, so I'm also going to use a fine liner for the last, um, for the details in the last part of the tutorial. All right, so to get started, I'm going to dip my brush in some water and get some of the Opera Rose Pink on my palette. Or you can use this, um, the paint straight out of the pan and then just very loosely, very quickly, just draw some shapes. And you can see because this handmade paper has such a rough structure that you might get some unexpected results and might have to go over it one more time. So I'm keeping it really loose, very quick strokes, just doing some simple oval shapes here, oval and round shapes. So of course you can use any kind of paper that you like, as long as it's watercolor paper that's pretty thick. Because, you know, we're gonna work with quite a bit of water in this one. So if you use paper that's too thin, it's gonna warp and buckle. So for this one, you just want to use some really thick watercolor paper. All right, I'm rinsing out my brush in some water going to grab my lime green paint and this time just going to grab the paint right out of the pan and while the pink paint is still wet go in there and just add the green leafy details and as you can see it blends beautifully with the pink Okay, and I'll do this for all five of my shapes. You might have to rinse out your brush in between strokes so that you don't get too much of a pink hue, unless you really like that, but I'm trying to still maintain the green part of the leaves, so I'm just rinsing out my brush occasionally in between strokes okay and a few of them i'll just let blend so this is a very loose technique as i said and it's a wonderful way to just you know basically get started get some paint on the paper not really trouble yourself so much with the outcome just really just do it 
for the fun of it. And if you get some blends that were unintended, maybe there's um, you know, some pink going into your green a bit more than you wanted, just you know, let it be. So this paper is really interesting to work with. I usually work with, uh, mm, I'm going to say machine-made paper, which is, has more of a flat, smooth surface. I actually uh, really like working with hot press watercolor paper too, which has a very smooth surface. But I have to say, I really like this, except um, especially for, for this kind of practice because it's so it's so unexpected so it makes you loosen up even more all right so the first part is done I'm gonna let this dry and I'll be right back hello and welcome back the dragon fruits have dried and look at these really nice peach hues here mm, love it Okay, I also forgot to mention that I will be using a third color today, which is a Naples yellow. Very, very opaque color with a with a yellow hint, yellow hue. So I'm only going to use this paint here for the inside part of the fruits. You can also just leave this white. I mean, uh, the dragon fruits we have here in Hawaii, most of them have these um, pink rind and then on the inside they're white. But there are also dragon fruits that are pink inside or have slightly slight color variations. So feel free to color in your dragon fruits any color you like. All right, so over here it just mixed a little bit with the pink, so I have a slight pink in here, but that's totally fine. Okay. And um, while this layer dries, I'm going to start with the details with my fine liner. So as this paper is really rough, let's see if this number five works at all, because you, know, you might actually use have to use a thicker one for this kind of paper, but oh, that's fine. Okay, then with very quick strokes, just add a few defining outlines here. Oh, I forgot another step. <laughs> okay, now that I've come to this dragon fruit here, I wanted to add a few more of the green parts of the fruit here in the center of the fruit. So for, for this step, I'm gonna mix the paint a bit more opaque, a bit more creamy, so less water, more pigment. Then with a few quick strokes, actually from bottom up is smarter. <laughs> like this. And here we go, that's it. All right, and back to my fine liner. Okay, make sure you don't dip your fine liner into the parts that are still wet. So just go over the parts that are already dry and just add some random lines to just emphasize the shapes of your dragon fruit. And you can also do the outlines with a dip pen, a pointed pen, and some ink. You can do them with a very fine brush and some watercolor, with a pencil, with another marker, whatever you like, whatever suits your style. You can, of course, also do the outline first and then paint the outline in with watercolor. I just personally find that when I do that, I feel less free and I tend to focus more on the details and in this exercise today, in this little tutorial, I really want you to just loosen up and just go for it. 
Okay, I'm just going to add some spirals here, some dots, maybe some you know, strokes like that. So whenever you paint fruits and you want to simplify things, just look at the fruit and try to break it down in just the, in the, the simplest shapes possible. For example, the dragon fruit is an egg shape, an oval shape, and then it has these teardrops all around. And that's basically it. And for everybody who's ever seen a dragon fruit, even a composition as loosely as this one will make them remember a dragon fruit. Or maybe not, <laughs> but that's fine. I'm just saying in general, our eyes, our brain is very capable of reading paintings and illustrations, even if they're not very realistic. You just need a few hints of the typical characteristics of whatever you're drawing and usually our brain can figure it out pretty quickly. Okay, let's see if that is already dry. No, nope, it's not. Okay, so I'm gonna let this dry and I'll be right back for the last few details. And I'm back. Everything is dry and I'm just gonna add the very last details, which are the little tiny seeds that create such a distinct look for the dragon fruit. Hi, kitty. Hi, are you hungry? Mm-hmm, it's not six o'clock. So this is my cat. He just wanted to let me know that it's dinner time, but it's not. He just thinks it is. And here we go. Dragon fruits in loose watercolor. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you next time. Aloha!